and welcome to Quilt Moxie, the podcast where Quilt Moxie meets Craftsy.com, an online community dedicated to providing the best education and resources for crafters. Join me, Ariana, your host, and come along on my video journey where I participate in the Craftsy online classes and community. Meet up with us online at QuiltMoxie.com or at your favorite hangout, Craftsy, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter. Check the credits at the end of the show for more. You can also subscribe to our mailing list to get your next and every episode with show notes delivered directly to your email as soon as the episode is available. It's as simple as dropping your email address and checking receive podcast by email. Hello, everybody, and welcome or welcome back to show number 16. Today we have balloons and a UFO in the gallery. More from our easy breezy brioche cow and prizes. So let's get started in the gallery. Now in the gallery we have a UFO and this UFO comes from my mom's vintage stash. Amongst all of her wool that she gave me, I found this alpaca sweater back that she had knit up and there are two other pieces that came with the bag and some of the alpaca wool. Now let me show you what I found. So, I have, I'm not sure what this piece is, I believe it might be the front or one side of the front of this cardigan. And here is a close-up of her knitting, which I find really amazing. I like her, her edge treatment. Let's take a look at that. It comes, I think each row ends with a pearl and then the following row is with a a knit stitch, I'm not sure here, I'm going to turn it around. Here's the edge treatment and look how nice the, the sleeve edging is or maybe this is, I'm not sure. Anyway, this is one other piece of this cardigan that I have here in our gallery. And here's another piece. Look at this. Yeah, you can see all the uh, frogging that's happening. And what is the difference between this piece and the front piece I showed you and the back piece? From what I can tell, she knitted this plus the back with two strands of yarn. This is entirely knit with one strand of yarn. And there was uh, just a little bit of yarn left over, which I'm going to talk about when we get to our brioche cow. Um, so, but the point is, there's just no way that even if I had the pattern, which I don't, if I had any more of this yarn, which I do not, that I would be able to complete her, her cardigan that she had started. Now, how sad is that? And um, I don't think it's that unusual because I know that as a quilter, I've got a couple of UFOs that it would break your heart if you saw what's not finished. So, in any case, when she gave this to me, she said it was alpaca wool and I should do with it as I please. And uh, she also mentioned to me that she did try to get more yarn, but there was no more yarn available for her to complete the project. So it just stayed in a bag all these years. And um, yeah, so I'm going to see what I'm going to do. If I'm going to be able to repurpose this yarn, I'd like to use it for our brioche cow, maybe some of it. But it really breaks my heart 
to have to undo all of this cable and lace knitting. Really beautiful. So that's what's in the gallery. I thought um, maybe uh, maybe you too have some of these gorgeous UFOs lying around and you can see how how sad it is that the only thing I can do with this is maybe repurpose the yarn, transform it into another... I don't know what to do yet. Anyway, so that's one of the many UFOs that my mom has given me. Maybe I'll show you some more in another show. Let's move on to something a lot of fun, a lot of fun. The Easy Breezy Brioche Cow. Now when I started this cow, I put the word easy there because I thought, oh, I've been doing all these craftsy knitting classes and it's going along and it's pretty fun and nothing really that difficult. Well, easy, it wasn't for me. I don't think brioche was easy for me in the beginning. But now, I believe I'm over the brioche hump, and the first cowl that we had, which was basically the swatches and the hat, um, that was the hardest cowl so far. I have now completed two cowls and the first project of the third cowl. There's three cowls for the whole easy breezy brioche knit along during the summer. And now, finally, I feel that having put in that effort, in the first cal especially, um, means that the next cal and the cal, what I'm knitting now in brioche, I feel that it's just reinforcing what I've already learned. So I'm going to, I'm pretty convinced that now, once I complete the third cal, I'm going to be comfortable in brioche. That's, that's what I'm saying to myself. We'll see if it's true. In any case, so uh, what happened with the first cow, we did have our first uh, drawing of the prize for the first cow, which was a knitting project bag. And I was so excited to award the uh, the knitting bag to Parole, who uh, I'm going to maybe show some of her projects here. I'll probably put some pictures in so that you can see what she was doing during the cow. And Parole was absolutely delighted with my knitting bag. I'm so thrilled. In fact, and she she's okay if I mention this, she wanted to contribute a donation to the podcast. This is the first time it ever happened to me. So uh, thank you so much, Parul. And as everybody knows, I'm doing this podcast as a tribute to my mom, for my mom. And uh, it's not necessary to contribute to the podcast, but uh, yes, I will accept it because there are costs involved and it does help and we can buy more prizes and give out more prizes which are just so much fun. So thank you very much again, Parul, and it was a pleasure for me to be able to send you the knitting bag and I'm so happy that you're enjoying it. So let's talk about some of the other prizes that we have in our Easy Breezy Brioche Cal. I showed you the last time the other um, knitting project bag that I came up with. I'll just show it to you again very quickly. So, oops. That was this one. And it's huge. You can definitely put in a sweater project and carry everything you need in this project bag. So if you want to see more on this project bag, you can go to Quilt Moxie, the podcast Ravelry group, and I'm sure I've got pictures posted there. Or just go back to, um, I think it was the last show, show number 15, where I showed the contents and what it looks like on the inside. Right now, I have another UFO in there. 
that I'm not going to bring out. So we'll just leave it as that at that. And it's a, a sweater size as well. For the last cow where we're doing two color brioche, I used two free craftsy classes and I created a drawstring knitting bag. So this is from the free craftsy class by Kristen Link where you can make a bucket bag and a drawstring project bag. So this is what it looks like. Ta -da. And of course it's fully lined. And uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's very well done. Of course I added um, little tabs and things. And I have a fixation right now on mesh. So I added this, oh, Kristen's, uh, Kristen's uh, drawstring bag does not come with a zipper. So this I did add. I did add the zipper meshed area. Because I think it's kind of cool to maybe add, and that's what I did here. You can put your ball band in there so that you can see from the outside of your project bag if you leave them lying around for like 30 years like my mom um, what uh, yarn you use because the yarn that was used here comes with no ball band so I have no idea all I know is she remembers it was alpaca and I don't know I wouldn't be able to identify the yarn at sight or by feel, so I'm taking her word for it. So yeah, you can uh, easily sign up for this free craftsy class and sew up your own project bag. You can always buy some fabric for a friend of yours who has a sewing machine and get them to sew it up for you. And the other free craftsy class, again by Kristen Link, is, um, what does she call it, a zippered pouch. So this is what it looks like. So I made it to match and I'm using sort of modern quilter fabric. And again, it's, oops, I have a pen in here, fully lined. And this is not part of it, but again, I have a fixation on this mesh. I don't know why, I just happen to like the mesh. So I added a see-through area for mesh, which is a very easy modification to the pattern. This is also something that you can download and sign up for free and make your own zippered pouch. So this is the price for Cal number three, which is the two color brioche projects. So I'm going to talk about the the, uh, the second brioche cowl, which was the Jackie scarf and the mitts that I'm wearing. So the Jackie scarf was from the class Explorations in Brioche Knitting by Nancy Marchand, and I'm wearing it around my neck. And what I did was I turned the scarf into an infinity scarf instead of just the regular scarf that the pattern was. Again I used mom's prehistoric now discontinued wool which is this one and let's see it's called Country Style by Sirdar and I think if I were to knit the Jackie scarf again, I would probably double the yarn because it was just too fine. I would have liked it a bit thicker. And the first attempt at the infinity, let me just take it off here, at the infinity scarf, ah, okay, so. What was fun about the, the Jackie scarf was that after a, a bit of brioche knitting, 
it was very easy for you to be able to follow the pattern the way that the pattern was laid out. It was very intuitive. So very enjoyable and it reinforced the brioche knitting that we learned. The tricky part was when I tried to graft the brioche stitches together. You cannot Kitchener brioche together. That's what I've learned. So um, in our Ravelry group I've posted and I've requested and people have referred me to several places where people have grafted brioche stitch together and I've even posted on the platform to Nancy how she would go about grafting brioche stitch together so you can check that out on the graf Craftsy platform. In any case um, I would like to be able to graft brioche. This is my second attempt. I'm going to show you what it looks like where I grafted can you see where I grafted it together it's definitely not a perfect graft but it's flat the first time around it did not look good I might just post a picture for you to see what my first attempt was but I might just not so here's the other side of the grafting and what happened was after I had removed my first grafting attempt, I had to re-knit a bit so you can see I don't know where my re-knitting was in my grafting. I think this is my grafted area here and this is where I had to re-knit a couple of rows so that the pattern would sort of match the rest of the the scarf. So yeah the reason I'm going for the infinity scarf is because my daughter um, prefers an infinity scarf and I like the way the Jackie scarf sort of falls no matter what you do as an infinity scarf I think it's pretty nice and from the other class by Mercedes Tarasovich Clark, we were knitting the the mitts. So here, here are the mitts. So they have a little sort of cable-y design on the front of the mitts, and they were super fun. I'm still struggling with the Italian cast on, so I ended up. Um, just doing my regular crochet cast on and at least with the uh, cast on that I used I can tell when I'm wearing it inside out or not because on the other side you'll see the pearl bumps here but otherwise again brioche fabric makes it reversible and uh, yeah a lot of fun once you get into it. And when I knit it, I happened to knit my uh, mitts two at a time and it, that worked out really well. It was a fast knit. I really enjoyed it. And I know they're going to be very practical for free motion quilting, for example, where in the winter time your hands might just get a little bit cold while you're doing that under the sewing machine. But right now, since we're still in summer, almost everybody back to school. It's a bit cooler but probably not cool enough for me to wear that so I'm going to take off my gloves for now. I'll keep the scarf on for a bit because I believe one of our participants in our Ravelry group wanted to know what the infinity scarf looked like when you were wearing it so I'll just play around with it a bit so that you can get an idea of how the design falls when you're wearing it as an infinity scarf instead of a regular scarf. And the third cal and our last cal has two projects again. This time I started with Mercedes class, brioche knitting made easy, and she has the brioche vine cowl. And I had two 
yarns that were very close in value. In other words, one was white, the other one is light gray. And I wasn't even sure if the pattern would show, but I really like the way it looks. Let me see if I can hold this far enough back so that you can see. And this wool has such a nice drape. Mind you, um, I did not get gauge with this wool. So I, instead of five repeats, I ended up doing six. And let me just, you know what? I think I'll take this off so that you can see what it looks like when, when you're wearing it as well. And before I show you that, you'll see on my edging, there's a white edging, and that's because I ran out of gray wool on my cast off row. So that's the difference between where I cast it on, so at least now I can see where I cast it off, and where I cast it off. I'm going to turn it inside out so you can see the other side. So on the other side, you're going to see the gray with a white sort of background. So here's what it looks like on the other side. I think it's a little bit more subtle with the gray because again with color theory you know that the white sort of comes towards you and the darker color will recede so that's why this way where you see the white on top and the gray as a background I think the colors pop a bit more so anyway Let's just put that on so you can see what that looks like. Oops. Which way? Does it really matter which way I wear it? No, because it's reversible. So. I think it's going to be really fun to wear in the winter time. Or maybe fall. Very nice. And it was a lot of fun. I was surprised that um, having done our first cowl, I was able to remember how to do the two color brioche knitting. And uh, yeah, it was fun to knit because it was just reinforcing what I had learned. And now the last project in our cowl is the Alex Scarf by Nancy Marchand. And that's Explorations in Brioche Knitting. So for that project, I wanted it to become an infinity scarf as well. So, this time it's with two colors. And I decided that I was going to repurpose Mom's sweater. So, I started doing some dyeing in the microwave with my food dye. So, here are the three, no, four colors I ended up dyeing. Uh, so we have the pink, which is here, and then I turn that pink, it's very fuzzy, into this blue and this sort of maroony color. And then I turned it into this sort of olivey, greeny color. And the last color, I turned it into a deep, deep purple color. And I, I did a sample with a bit of pink just to see what it would look like. Then I wanted to test knit the, um, the pattern of the Alex scarf and use it as a swatch. And at the same time, I wanted to try a, a brioche edging that I saw on, I think it was YouTube. And I also came up with a, a different crochet cast on. So... I figured I'd do a swatch and see how that would all turn out. So I'll show you. Here is the sample that I that I knit up, sort of my swatch, just to see what mom's wool doubled would give as a gauge for this particular scarf. So on the bottom you can see my new crochet cast on, which I really like. I'm going to turn it around so you can see the crochet cast on. And then here's a very cool three-stitch brioche edging, which I like a lot as well. 
I think I'm going to use that for my Alex scarf. And then I did all the different color combinations on the, uh, so I used the, this color as the background color because I had more of it. And I knit all the different colors with it to see what I would end up doing for the Alex scarf. So that's where I'm at. And who knows? Maybe uh, I won't even use this wool for the Alex scarf and try something different, or I'll have to pick sort of a color combination. So far I'm sort of gravitating to this combination, which is a dark purple and original pink combination. But we'll see. Not sure. So, yeah. And that brings me to the end of our brioche cow. The next time I will probably uh, talk about the, um, the winners of our brioche cow again and show you the finished Alex scarf, I hope. I just remembered that I forgot to mention Knit Companion. Now, when I'm doing the two-color brioche or any of the brioche projects, I really recommend or suggest using Knit Companion and the charts. In the beginning, I was not comfortable with the brioche charts, but once I started getting used to the new symbols, I prefer doing brioche using a chart. And when it comes to two color brioche, which I find a real mind bender, the Knit Companion software really, really helps me a lot. And I'm going to show you how I use it. So I'm going to show you a little snippet of the Alex Scarf sample. Uh, not enough for you to be able to, to do it from my screen here, but just to show you how I use the Knit Companion. Now I hope you can see this. So you might notice here that it's purple. So the purple represented the color yarn that I was knitting on. With brioche knitting you have, and you're doing two color yarns, you're basically knitting both yarns on the purple side and both yarns on the pink side or the other color side. So in my, ca my case, here are the two rows highlighted and the fact that you see purple all over the screen means that I was on the purple side. So now let me go to the next row. So I go up to the next row and the next row shows me that I'm on the light side and you have two rows to knit as well. And then you'll see these big blocks here of highlighted yellow. What that represents when I'm doing my brioche knitting is 10 stitches of blocks of 10 stitches, 5 stitches, 10 stitches. That way I was able to find my, my way in the brioche stitches easier. And on the bottom here you have your symbols so that you can easily refer back to the brioche symbols on the chart. So let me just scroll up again. So here I would be on the purple side, I would do two rows, and then again on the light side. So I find the Knit Companion very helpful, especially for brioche knitting. And that brings me to prizes. So in addition to the project bags that I've been uh, sewing up as Cal prizes, we have reached our 100th member of Quilt Moxie, the podcast group. And as a result, Craftsy will be selecting the winner of a free Craftsy class. I don't know if they've done it already, if the, um, the winner has been informed, but the reason I'm mentioning this to you is if you have participated in our Craftsy class giveaway, um, 
or you decide you still want to try, go in, post, post your favorite craftsy class, and expect an email. Some one of you will win a free craftsy class. So watch your email. Maybe it's you from Craftsy. They'll let you know if you are the free craftsy class winner. On the topic of prizes and future prizes, be on the lookout for a prize for subscribers to receiving podcasts by email. When I started this podcast as a tribute to mom, mom informed me that unless she was receiving it, the podcast, by email, there was no way she would be able to watch the podcast. So, needless to say, I did create a, a mail list for people to receive the podcast by email. And surprisingly, there are quite a few of you who are enjoying the podcast by email, which thrills me because clearly mom uh, knew what she was talking about. And as a result, you get the show notes as well. And for those of you who uh, are enjoying the show notes, you will notice that in addition to most of what I talk about here, I include several goodies in addition in the show notes where I see fit. For example, the last time I was talking about our quilt show here in Montreal, and I included a video from YouTube that you get in your show notes to the three-dimensional quilt by... Dominic Ehrman. So although I didn't mention anything on the podcast about it, I just thought it would be something that you would like to see in the show notes. So be on the lookout or subscribe now to receive the podcast by email. And I'm going to set up some sort of a prize giveaway for subscribers by email. I'd like to thank you for joining me here today. And I'd like to invite you back next time when we talk about socks. In the meantime, join us on Quilt Moxie, the Ravelry group. Join our easy breezy brioche knit along. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Take care. À la prochaine.